1968, renowned Canadian psychiatrist Ian Stevenson received a letter from a woman called Charlotte Eastland, who had just read about his research into reincarnation. In the letter, Charlotte believed that her daughter Susan had vivid memories of the life of her deceased older sister Winnie, who had been fatally struck by a car in 1961. She claimed that when her daughter was about two years of age, she made references about the life of Winnie and an uncanny amount of knowledge about her. Susan also remembered playing in the fields with horses with her sister Sharon. She said that she was not afraid of the horses and had even walked under one. It so happens that Winnie had played with Sharon in a pasture and really was unafraid of horses and had even walked under a horse. Susan had a birthmark on her left hip and Professor Stevenson obtained a copy of Winnie's medical records from the hospital where Winnie had died. The birthmark was in the exact same location where Winnie had been fatally struck by the car. It was clearly shown in the hospital's autopsy report. The following is the amazing story where a young girl by the name of Winnie Eastland dies at the age of six after being hit by a car and is reborn into the same family as Susan Eastland. In 1961, when Winnie Eastland was struck and killed, the whole family, as expected, felt excruciating emotional pain. Half a year later, Winnie's older sister Sharon dreamed of her dead sister, saying that she would be returning home. Two years later, Winnie's mother Charlotte became pregnant and also dreamed of a dead child, saying she would return home. In 1964, as she was about to give birth, Mr Eastland heard a voice say distinctly, Daddy, I'm coming home. Charlotte Eastland gave birth to a baby girl, who she named Susan. Charlotte believed that because the deceased daughter Winnie was constantly on her mind and had dreamed about her returning, she felt that she'd given birth to her dream. When Susan was two years old and learning to speak, a strange thing happened, where if anyone asked her age, she would say that she was six years old, which was Winnie's age at the time she'd had the terrible accident. One day, when Susan saw a picture of Winnie, she suddenly became emotional and said, That is me! Susan also talked about playing on the swings at school, even though she was still very young and had never been to school, and had never played on swings. Before her death, Winnie had attended school and was always playing on the swings. Because of the strange behaviour of their daughter, Charlotte and her husband could not help but think, Is Susan really their deceased daughter, Winnie, who had reincarnated and returned to the family? When Winnie was alive, Mrs Eastland used to pull out a cookie jar that had a picture of a cat on the lid where she would regularly play a game with them. When one of the children wanted a cookie, she pretended to ask the cat how many pieces he could get. Then she replied in a cat's voice, Meow, you can take one, or Meow, you can take two. After Winnie's death, Mrs Eastland put the jar away in a cupboard and kept it out of sight. When Susan was about four years old, Mrs. Eastland decided to take the jar out of the cupboard and fill it with cookies, as she used to do with her daughters. The first time Susan asked for cookies, Mrs. Eastland had momentarily forgotten that Susan was completely unaware of the cat game and said to Susan, OK, what did the cat say? Susan's answer surprised her, where she said in a soft voice like her mother's, Meow, you can take one piece. That was not the only surprise, where her mother found later that there were more surprises to come. When Susan spoke clearly about things that she'd personally never experienced in her current life. One example was where she said that she once went with her family to the sea to catch crabs, and also said the names of the people who had been present at that time. What Susan described was exactly what had happened the year before Winnie had died, when the whole family went for a walk along the beach in Washington. Although Susan was only five years old, she still claimed to be 11 years older than her brother Richard. Winnie was three years older than Richard. As a result, the family increasingly began to believe that Susan was Winnie. Mrs Eastland once asked Susan if she remembered little Gregory and Uncle George, who lived across the street. The mother was fully aware that Susan had never met them, because Susan was born in Idaho, and when Winnie was alive, Gregory and Uncle George lived in a different town. Unexpectedly, Susan said, I miss Greggy. I often play with him. Greggy is the nickname for the boy Gregory. Susan also said that she missed Uncle George. When we went to school, we would often stop and play at his house for a while. That was true, as Winnie would often go and play at her uncle's house. And the sad fact was that Winnie was actually playing at her Uncle George's house on the day of the terrible accident. 
Susan later recounted another interesting story, saying that one time when she went shopping with her mother, mother had left her next to a food stall that was not too far away. Then suddenly, a boy ran up and kissed her, making her father very angry. Charlotte easily remembered the incident as if it was yesterday, but she understood clearly that it wasn't Susan who had lived that event at the food stall. It was Winnie. The parents found that Susan and Winnie had very similar personalities, that they were both sociable and good-natured. It was also interesting to note that Susan had a birthmark on her left hip that was in the exact same location where Winnie had been fatally hit by the car. It was clearly shown in the hospital's autopsy report. So, how come Susan was able to recall so much of her deceased sister's life, unless she'd lived it before? There appears no doubt that Winnie Eastland, after being deceased for three years, had been reincarnated into the same family, and was now Susan Eastland. 